everyone, and welcome to Between Plays Stock Market Strategies. Today with us, a special guest, Sandeep Panasar. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Um, so for everyone out there, Sandeep, uh, he's going to give us a little bit of our back, his background. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that's in IT. And uh, everybody knows on the show, we, we try to take it relax and just, you know, comfortable, sit back. We're going to be talking about IT generalities of what's going on out there. Uh, Sandeep, just for our viewers, all right? And, uh, you know, uh, as we were mentioning before the show, anything goes on here. Well, almost anything goes on here. So it'll just be ourselves. Sure. Can, can you give us a little bit of your background? Sure. So I, I'm the vice chair uh, for the Linux uh, Foundation Networking Marketing Advisory Council. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I do that. So that's an, an entire open source project, and it uh, really involves a lot of things around 5G, Super Blueprint, that kind of stuff. Um, and really what they're trying to do is they're trying to create, innovate, and transform uh, the telecommunications industry. So my background is, per, is primarily telecommunications. That's where I've been. That's where I've come from. Um, so I understand infrastructure. I understand that kind of stuff. Um, and then if we, you know, go a little further, it's, it's technology, it's new technology. So whether it's, um, things from Bitcoin to stocks to, uh, whatever the case may be, I, that guy that always entrenches himself in that kind of stuff. So there you go. That's my intro. That's pretty amazing. Um, so, you know, when you're talking about telecommunications, um, like, I guess we're not, we don't have to stay too much into it. But I think it's, how can I say, you know, um, I'm looking at all of the stuff that's happening out in the world, and it's really related to the base of telecommunications. So a, a few weeks ago, we had this pretty big outage with Rogers, okay? And um, I looked at, you know, a whole bunch of your interviews in the background stuff, and I don't want to stay too much uh, only on the Rogers thing. It's more like, I guess, uh, going into... Um, you know, diversification of technology or, um, you know, is it um, just everything too easy for people today? Because, you know, with that outage, and, I, and, I, and I'm not placing blame on one service carrier or anything like that, because um, I guess we can look to see how, how this can maybe affect other people, right? Other uh, companies sure. as well. So, uh, you know, how important was that outage? Like, how do you see it like for, for the kids of today? Cause at 50 years old, I don't have a landline in my house anymore, but if I did, I would have, you know, you understand we used to know how to do certain things we, What for the young kids today. I mean, what kind of problems does this pose? So I guess some of the problems that it poses, at least from my standpoint, right. And I'll make a joke, you know, yeah. Yeah. And this is an old school joke, which none of your younger viewers who are listening to this podcast will get. But what time is it at your house, Billy? 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. That's because everyone didn't know how to program a VCR. Right. And half your half your viewers, if not more, didn't don't even know what a VCR is. My son, the other day, uh, he found a bunch of videotapes and he's like, what are these? And I'm like, they're videotapes. Here's a VCR machine. Go stick them in there. And he was like, couldn't even figure out which direction and how to get it done. And he's 13, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and he's not hes not a dummy. He, he's a smart kid, but he would just literally had no clue what it was he was dealing with. And so I think that what, what's happened now is that we've gotten to a point where everyone takes for granted. We are always going to have internet. We're always going to have TV. We're always going to have power. We're always going to have water. And why is that? Because that's how we've been conditioned to be. And I think the challenge, the, the, the big challenge that we have is what happens if all of that disappears? We don't think about these things. Because we take everything for granted and because we take everything that we're given and that we eat, consume, breathe, use for granted, we sit there and we go, okay, awesome. Yeah. I have yeah. it there. So yeah. when I turn on my when I turn on my laptop, right, it's always on. I have internet. When I turn on my iPad, I have internet. When I turn on my Fortnite, I can connect with all my friends. Nobody remembers the days when we were lugging around 21-inch monitors and towers to 
build a network and spend four hours doing that. Yeah. Right now it just works. Yeah. And because it just works, it makes everyone complacent. And that complacency, what it does is it makes everyone go, oh, well, it should just be there. Yeah. Maybe it should just be there. But if you are a business and you want to think about something that's good for yourself, then what you need to do is, and, and I say need, what you need to do as a business that's is right. you need to figure out how you are going to diversify. So think about it as an investment play, if you will, right? Yeah. Or an insurance play, Yeah. right? Diversify your investments. That means I'm going to buy a connection from one provider. I'm going to buy a second connection from another provider that I may or may not need. Maybe I'll do failover. Maybe I'll do redundancy. Maybe I'll do bonding, whatever the case may be. But what I want to know is that my business will be up all the time. I can charge my customers for the services that I'm delivering them, and they can pay me for the services services that I'm giving them. Yeah. With that outage that happened, you know, the really crazy thing was that the payment systems went down. So yeah. I know people I, I know people who were driving who couldn't pay for parking. And yeah. they couldn't even pay cash because it's all digital parking. So they Everything had to go to digital. digital. They had to go to regular parking lots. Yeah. And who carries cash in this day and age anyway? No, right? No one. Like I, I don't. never carry. I, I don't carry cash. No, me neither. So that no. th this is where we get kind of stuck in this weird, weird construct of our own, you know, our own, um, not self fulfillment, but it, it's more like okay, it's just an expectation. We expect yeah. everything to work. That's true. So, you know, that that makes no sense, right? And so how do we protect ourselves? So how do we protect ourselves? That is a very good question because right now we really don't know how, right? We don't we I don't I don't know if there isn't there an answer for that unless you know something that there may be an answer, but let's say like uh I just want to, you know, it's, it's a basic example here, which is a basic example. Like my kids, right? They're at day they can't. Sure. So, and I'm just saying, and it's, this is simple, right? Cause this is not like, we're not talking about other things, but just as simple as day camp. So I'm trying to text my wife that morning and nothing's working. So I'm like, mm -hmm. what's going on? She gets through to me on messenger somehow. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, so we managed to just get back and forth like that. And then I was like, okay, well the kids are at the summer camp and I'm not thinking that, cause I know it's not just me and her. Cause I, I started talking to other people and they were like oh everything's down the rogers is down but my brain didn't click like oh all those 14 year old i'm not 14 but let's say 17 year olds and stuff at the summer camp 19 year olds at the summer camp like they've not known anything other than a cell phone so if an emergency happened there with our children would they know how to react because you can't call 911 you can't do anything they're all between 17 and 19 let's just say they've only known cell phones now they have nothing they're cut off from 911 they're cut off from everything and that's like a very simple right a really simple example uh and i just want to take it to now the extreme right so the sure. simplest to the extreme back in the 1980s right we're 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 similar age age group so back in the 1980s do you remember that, you know, at night the TV would go off and everybody would just see like a, a symbol or yep. and then it would go shh, right? White noise and stuff. Everything had yeah, a time. Canada. We all, we all had it. Everybody had time. But as much as that, right, we all knew when it was over or something like that. If there was a presidential address, right, a public service announcement, it would come on at any time during a show. And most of the people were all watching the same type of shows back in those days, whether late seventies, early eighties, Gilligan's Island. It doesn't really matter what it is. <laughs> one of my favorite shows. One of my favorite. Well, shows. Of course, growing up mine too. <laughs> three but hour tour. The, yeah. A three hour tour. The president would get on. If the president got on, everybody was watching that show. What's going on? Why is the president on? And everybody would be like, cause it was cold war era, right? Yep. Now we're going back into what it seems to be another cold war era against two big nuclear competing countries. Back then, your TV worked. Your cathode ray tube, 500 pound sitting on the floor TV worked, right? What do we do today if everything was just out? How do you, how do you communicate? Who tells us what's going on? 
we would imagine if everybody was cut off, all this infrastructure was cut off somehow on purpose. Mm -hmm. When do we find out? How do we know? What's, where's the resembling point? So, you know, what's the, uh, there's got to be a way that we got to keep up this communication with each other. So, so here, here's the thing. We, we've become so reliant on this and the, we've become so dependent. Yeah on the ability to communicate yep. with other people. And if we look at, let's roll back even a thousand years, right? Yeah. Um, what do we need to do, right? As human beings, we wanna be in touch with people. Yep. We wanna communicate. We wanna be interacting. We wanna be talking to each other. We wanna be speaking to each other. You know, first it was letters, sending letters by the post, you know, to somebody across the country. And then it became phones and tin cans and whatever. And then it became uh, something more progressive where we suddenly have internet, and mobile phones, like these kind of things, right? Yeah. And um, we became more connected. The more connected we become, the closer we become. And the more closer that we become, the better we, I, I believe personally, that better we become as human beings and as a society and as a group and as a community. And True. we can create create a lot of things because everything happens a lot faster. True. But there's two things that I'll, I'll say. One is you don't have to be fast, right? I never answer my voicemails uh, ever. Uh, I'll check them once every month. That's just me. Um, voicemails, me too. I'm yeah, bad at yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So voicemails are like if you leave me a voicemail like i don't even know what's wrong with you right? just stop um <laughs> me too it's I, true i have no fucking clue what or whatever like, like, like why unless did you, you're why a did you doctor leave? or something i don't know like <laughs> why did you leave me a voicemail even if i call my doctor my doctor's like don't leave voicemails we don't we don't listen to them so i don't even know why we pay for voicemail but whatever oh, that's no, a whole that, other yeah, show that, that, right that's, that's, a whole yeah. other show um the the other thing is the other thing is uh you know texts etc texts people who text back instantly it's because they're part of this instant gratification society yeah. that we have created true true right yeah. and i'm going to bring this all back to the infrastructure piece in a second right but it's it's that instant gratification society that we've created but these are the same people that are you know in the washroom texting and watching tiktoks and posting stuff and that's the only time they'll do it yeah. because the rest of the time they have a life. So it's like, I don't really understand what's wrong with you. Um, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. So what I will say though, is without any of the infrastructure, none of this would be possible. So, so think about how important is TikTok to you? How important is Snapchat to you? How important is Facebook to you? How important is 911? Oh, my mom or my dad is having a heart attack and they couldn't call someone, right? Yeah. Suddenly, what's more important? The other three things I just mentioned are all crap. Yeah. No one cares. No. Sorry. Like nobody seriously cares. No. This metaverse stuff, again, another conversation. Another conversation, but uh, I think it, 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 it's, it's all kind of crap, right? Like what we want to do is we want to make sure we can take care of our family or as a community and as a society. And that's what we should be doing. And the infrastructure helps us do that. So if I'm a business, if I am a just a human being working at home, yeah. how do I stay connected? Sure. If your connection goes down at home and you don't have to work for the day, well, good for you, I guess. That seems like a, a sort of semi-win. But at the, at the end of the day, what do we want to do and what do we want to give back and how are we going to give back things to people, right? And I think the big thing here is figuring out that diverse connect connections, connectivity, whatever it is. So that outage that you were talking about yeah. was very prominent and was very profound because when one provider goes down, everybody is screwed, right? Yeah. Is it their fault? Sure. They should have maintained their network. They mm -hmm. should have gotten things to be a little bit more redundant. They should have been had a way to to get their 911 services up and running and keep them up and running because that's a critical service. Big that's time. something that, that people's lives depend on. Yeah, you can. Right? Yeah. But at the same token, is it entirely their fault? Because 
companies like Interact, like where we're, our payment systems, they were down yeah. because they relied on one provider. That wasn't anyone's fault except for their own. They chose, and it was a choice, but they chose not to pay for diverse diversity, right? Which yeah. was meaning having a second provider, a second thing on all of that, right? Yeah. And so that 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 was a huge problem. So I go back to the example of not being able to pay for parking and having to figure out how to get cash. And oh, I can't get cash because the cash machines aren't connected and they're not working. So, you know, it becomes a cascading series of errors. Absolutely. Because even Interact, I when when I went to go use the Interact that day and it was down, I was like, Interact's down? Oh, that's right. Cause I had to go to um I had to go to Hyundai. And um at the Hyundai dealership to get my car back, I had to I had to pay. So mm -hmm. I had to use my Interact. He's like, well, the Interact's down. And I was like, wait a minute. Rogers is down. The Interact's down. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Like, are we just going to... What are the chances that it's not related? Well, you know what I mean? I was just going, uh, are we just going to wait until like a bomb goes out of the sky, you know, going on Plasville Marie? And, like, it's just weird because I didn't, I didn't expect that. Okay, Rogers is down. So all the Interact services are down. Like, what the hell? Like, we've just been thrown back into the dark ages first of all i don't even have any money on me like we we're saying and no cash whatsoever and who's anyways who's going to carry around that kind of money to pay uh when your car's at a dealership it's almost yeah. nothing's under 500 dollars anymore uh, that's just actually being nice it's like oh well there you go but um yeah and we we're thrown back in the store and so no interact and i i'm shocked that interact you know didn't have like a like a more secure or or backup plans because it was literally out as long as Rogers was out. Whenever Rogers would come back and fix certain things, it slowly came back, but it was like at the same speed almost. But listen, so if, if you want to talk Rogers, right? I mean, they had an outage last year, which was 16 hours as well, too, right. right? Yeah. So right. That, yeah. That, that was a massive outage. Like the one that we had just had now was not as big as the original one, yeah. but same token, uh, they it happened the first time. Clearly, they didn't fix it, exactly. and then it happened a second time. Now, the reasons for each outage are different, so you know they are what they are. But it's not. I I feel that relying on a single service provider is a failure of your own personal faith. Yeah. Like it literally needs to be. You know, what am I doing for myself? Okay, for home, yeah. If you're home and you're not working, my internet goes out. Oh well. Yeah. Right. Like it'll 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 come back. Right. I'll get my TV back. I'll get my Netflix. I'll get all that stuff back eventually. Yeah. But if you're a business and business continuity of service, as I was saying at the top of the call, is it's a big thing. I think it's an idea that people don't embrace, never have embraced, and um should be embracing. You know, the first thing that people do is go, okay, I well, so I'll give you a, a pure example here. Health insurance. Yes. Do you pay for health insurance? Of course you do. Everyone pays for health insurance because they want to know that if something goes wrong with my physical system, Correct. then I can be taken care of. Computers, technology, redundancy, failover, that's insurance. Yeah. Firewalls, security, all that stuff. That's insurance. Right. And nobody wants to pay for that because they can't see it. They can't smell it. They can't taste it. Oh, so yeah. they're like, I'm not going to pay for this stuff, but if you flip the script yeah. and put it in the context of health insurance, it's like everybody pays for health insurance. Why wouldn't I pay for health insurance? Because if something happens, I need to be taken care of. Yeah. Well, guess what? That is exactly what this is for your business. It's business continuity as a service. So you have to de decide and determine if you're willing to pay it and what price you're willing to pay. And the risk factor. So the risk fast factor being, um, am I going to <clears throat> pay to ensure my business continuity if something happens, which effectively is insurance? Yeah. Or am I going to sit there and go, eh, whatever, didn't pay for it. Oh, my iPhone broke. I dropped it in the phone. Uh, dropped it in the water. Damn. Yeah. Right. Like I didn't pay for the insurance. So that's what insurance is for. And business continuity is insurance or 
assurance, if you will, not even insurance, it's assurance that your business will stay up and running. Yeah, that you know what, uh, what you're saying about people not being able to see it, but super important. It uh, sort of reminds me of, uh, like say, building a house and yep. all the stuff you have to put into the walls. You know, it's like you don't see it, but if you don't put up the, the right R score values and all this kind of stuff, you don't pay for the right stuff. It'll be cold in yep. the winter time. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's it's all the stuff you don't see that builds what you could put on top, you know, that we get to like, you know, this picture behind me and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But you're right. So it's 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 everything in the background. So is there like um so should we scale back? Like should because we went from what from LTE to 4G, now we're going to 5G. Like it's just getting bigger and bigger and more bandwidth and stuff like that. Should should all these companies not just Rogers, but like Rogers, Bell, Verizon, TELUS, and all these guys, should they all scale back and say, look, we need to look at a way that we don't ever go down. We should probably help each other. And also maybe like as a last question, should governments be allowed to be involved through some kind of satellite linking system that if ever they need to get in touch with us, so more security, right? More secure. If ever they need to say like, you know, something's going on you know like and your phones just automatically go on you're like what the hell i've never seen this before government you know notification should the government somehow be allowed to have that through a satellite system like should we step back because we don't have landlines anymore we don't have solid cable lines anymore more you know what i mean like nothing works the same way it used to so do we need to rethink rethink security so what, what you're talking about security. Uh, so yes, uh, rethinking security is definitely a thing that needs to be done. Right. And personal security is, is one of those things. I'm one of those people where I'm just like, I have no fucks to give. Like at this point, it's just like, whatever, uh, my, my shit is out there and people see it and that's okay. And whether you find it or don't find it or want to send me scammy messages, it's fine. I can deal with all of that stuff, but I'm a little bit more sophisticated than the regular user. So I know what is a scam, what's not a scam, et cetera. I think for the, you know, anyone who doesn't know things and technology in depth the way I do, I think it's, it's really important to be vigilant and be aware from a security standpoint of what's being sent to you and what you're doing. But if you're looking at a company and a corporation at the end of the day, if somebody wants to get in, they'll get in, right? Yeah. So how how important are you, right? And when I say how important are you, are, are you the government? Are you the president? Are you, you know, you know, running a nation? Sure, somebody's probably going to go after you. If you're me and you're on a dating site, nobody cares. But how about networks? Right? I mean, like, so that there's like fail safes, like something of that, like, you know, where, where our, let's say all our phones don't go down like this. Let's say world war three, for example, sure. like a network security where, where they could get in touch with us, like somehow, because no one could get in touch with us that day. So, so, so like, so right now, right now, the government, at least in Canada yeah. has a system in place, right? So there, these are these yellow alerts that go out and every single service provider is subscribed to that. They have to by law. It was it was mandated by the CRTC, uh, which is the you know Canadian Radio and Telecommunications um, uh, Council or committee or whatever it is, um, and so we get those alerts right. You'll get them across the country if there's a missing child or a missing whatever, and we That's have right. that in Canada. So the technology exists. I don't know if they have it in the U.S. I'm I'm not educated enough on that, but I definitely know that that that, that the technology exists, and so. Would they work though? Would would they work if? Uh... Sure, sure they would work. Oh yeah, sure work. Unless, unless someone's taking out satellites, sure it would work. Okay, it, so yeah, it, so it's going running through satellites then mostly. Uh, well, whatever. I, I, I mean, I, we could I, have I, that as a back a backup, I guess. Like the I, government. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know enough about how the system works. Okay. I think it's it's actually done over the radio towers, to be quite honest. Oh, nice. Okay, um, well, yeah, radio towers are good. Yeah, it, it, it's. I think it's done over the radio towers, and the, the the reason I think it's done over the radio towers is because it's an agreement with those providers. Now, the interesting thing is, all of those companies share the radio towers together, so it's it's actually a shared infrastructure across the country. 
Awesome. You know, you you can say that it's Bell or Rogers or whatever, but I know having uh, run a telecommunications company in the past that you know certain providers were buying um, buying towers off of me and buying backhaul and that kind of stuff. So I know that when they say we have a national network, it's not actually true because they don't. They're all buying off of each other. Oh, so awesome. it's a co-opetition environment. So okay. they have to support each other. Uh, and I guess in 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 that instance, they have to support each other. You know, with that outage, nine one one going down, somebody somewhere, don't know who it was, made a decision and said, "Yeah, we're not going to pay you for backup nine one one services because wow. why would we ever need it?" But that's <laughs> what somebody somewhere made that decision. That's true. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, right? you're right. Wow. I don't know who it was, but somebody, somebody consciously that. made that decision and said, "That's never going to happen." Well, it's happened twice in two in in two years now. So now they've gone and gotten a backup solution. Okay, well that's for that. That's really good to know. Yeah. On that note, just want to thank you so much, Sandy, for being here today. We really appreciate it, and everybody appreciates your time. And uh, we'll be on to the next one. So from between plays, thank you, Sandy, and uh, we'll talk again very soon. Thanks, Albert. Appreciate the time. Hello to everyone out there. Just taking two seconds of your time and asking you to hit the subscribe, and the like button. I'd like to also direct you to betweenplays.com, www.betweenplays.com, where we put up many different articles and go to our Twitter account for like really quick uh, information at betweenplays1. As we say here, our motto, research, prepare, plan, execute. Uh, always do your due diligence and um, stay strong, everybody. Stay strong. <laughs>